for Module 8, accessibility to every filmmaker was our goal. Hey, I'm Mike Thomas, one of the co-founders of Module 8. I'm here with our Module 8 tuners, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started and get the most out of your tuners. So let's get started. So the Module 8 tuner is the world's first variable cinema lens to actually adjust the look of your image. You can put the tuner on any EF lens and connect it to mirrorless cameras, dial in the amount of strength, dial in the amount of character that you want for your shot. Using the Module 8 variable tuning technology, we have created three distinct looks based on classic cinema lenses. Our L1 is based on the Super Baltar. This is a lens that is best known for the Godfather. Our L2 was inspired by the K35. K35s have just gotten so expensive. It's a legendary lens that used on Alien, used on American Hustle. So the third look is our L3. We call it Retroscope. It's really inspired by classic anamorphic lenses. And even though it's not an anamorphic lens, it's gonna give you some of the vibes that you might get when you're shooting a vintage anamorphic lens. We could have probably built that same technology into an expensive lens. We're like, no, let's do this as an adapter. Let's make it accessible to every creator possible so that creating these epic looks just isn't reserved for the top 1% of DPs. It's available to everyone. So when you're thinking about the tuners, you have to think about lens side and camera side. For lens side, the tuners support EF mount lenses. On the camera side, we support mirrorless cameras. And our first two mounts are Canon RF and Sony E. So the tuner, it mounts between your EF lens and your mirrorless body. And you just line up the dots like you would any lens and click it on. Then you take your EF lens, line up the dots, clip it on, and now you are ready to shoot with your Modulate Tuner. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit how to use the tuner. Right now I've got a Canon 50 millimeter F1.2. We've got the L1 and we have a Sony FX3. The EF tuners, they support autofocus and pass-through electronics, so you can control the aperture of the lens right from the camera. Autofocus works with the tuners, although, for example, with L1 and a fast F number, if you crank up the effect too strong, you might actually confuse the autofocus, and then we suggest you go to a manual mode. The L1 is our strongest effect, so even at minimum, it's already doing something. You could already see a little bit of softness to the face, and you could see some of the coma and astigmatism, some of the aberrations at the edge of the frame. And basically I've got this V-tuning knob and this is a creative tool, so there's no rules. It's what looks good to you. And if I wanna bring in more halation and more aberration, more look, I can turn this knob, the V-tuning knob to six, to eight, and to 10. And you can see at 10, the look is really extreme, really dreamy, everything is really glowing. The V-tuning knob works in conjunction with F number. While the tuning knob changed the amount of strength, the F number you use will also change the amount of strength. So if at F1.4, for example, if the L1 is too extreme, we can tone it back by changing the F number from F1.4 to F1.8. The L1, you'll still see effect probably up to about F4, where some of the other tuners like the L2, you might stop seeing the effect at around F2. Figure out the amount you want, change that look knob, play with your F number, find your sweet spot, and uh, you're good to go. So L1 is the Baltar look, and you can see right now, if you look at the face, and I'm at zero at F25, as I dial this up from two, four, six, eight, 10, you'll notice that a little bit of halation came into her face, everything's a little bit softer, you've got some interesting flower petal bokeh, and the critical thing is if you look at the pupil of her eyes, everything stayed in focus. So again, we like to emphasize, this is the world's first parfocal zoom lens for aberrations and for looks. So now I've changed the F number to F1.2 and it's a blowout effect. There's just a, a, a massive amount of halation and this is at the minimum. So there really is no minimum for L1 as you're deciding which tuner to buy. L1 comes on with some strength. It doesn't have a pure neutral position. And you can see it can do really extreme halation. It's almost dream sequence things. And as I move this up, two, four, six, eight, 10, you're taking a, a, a huge amount of, of, of veiling glare, you're dropping contrast, you're doing crazy things to the bokeh. But what we'd like to explain is there's contrast, which we're 
totally destroying. But there's also micro contrast, which is that resolution. If you're looking at the eye pupils, you can see the subject is totally still in focus. So if you're looking for the most extreme thing you can do, if you're like, I really wanna see the effect, I really wanna be purposeful, this is the one to use. From an F number guideline, two five is the sweet spot. Anything under that is gonna get very dreamy, very halated. Anything slower than that to a maybe four to five, six is where you're gonna start saying, okay, I'm not seeing as much of as, as the effect. So what would I use L1 for? L1 is just, our, I would say, our most general purpose look. It affects the frame everywhere. So it's the center of the frame. It's at the edges of the frame. For some people, it's going to be too strong. They're going to want something just, that's just a little bit of vintage. But if you're looking to make an impact, the L1 is the one you want. So the second look that Module 8 is offering is our L2, which is inspired by the Canon K35. The K35s were once described to me as the perfect amount of vintage. So the K35 for us actually has a neutral position. So when it's at zero, the effect is fundamentally off because one of the goals of L2 is that you could shoot with effect and with no effect. So we have a nice neutral position. As you dial it up, you are going to bring in just a nice soft amount of halation to the face. The roll off at the edges is subtle. Fundamentally, I like to think of this as almost like taking the edge off of an actor or actress's face. It's actual K35s are fast, they're T1.3. So the L2 really shines at fast F numbers. So you've gotta have lenses that are fast. You should be shooting 1.2, 1.3, 1.5. Even by F2, the L2 look is really subdued to the point where people will say, it doesn't do anything until I crank it like all the way up to 10. So right now, you look at the center of the subject in the frame as I dial from two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. At this speed, you can see the halation. You can see the softness. The other thing you're gonna see with the bokeh is that the bokeh is gonna change. Like It gives a nice soap bubble bokeh effect. It gives you these nice hot edges, which is just a really nice effect. So now that we're at one six, you're gonna see the effect isn't quite as strong, but it's still gonna be there. And as I'm coming up to four, six, eight, ten. It's just a really pretty look. As people ask, I'm using an f2.8 zoom lens, what tuner should I buy? I would probably say not the L2. You're gonna probably wanna look at the L1 or the L3. I'm gonna stop down to f2. I'd say this is really the point where you're gonna get some effect. Just remember, when you see this stuff on a 40 inch monitor or a 60 inch monitor, some of these effects that you don't see on small monitors are gonna be like, whoa, that's too much effect. So it's probably wise to at least evaluate the look on your final deliverable size uh, output device. And I'd say once you get into 2528, this effect is fundamentally gone. Recommended F numbers would be as fast as you wanted to shoot it to the sweet spot of, I'd say, 1.3 to 1.5, where the real K35s live. By F2, you're starting to say, I don't see a, a lot of effect unless I crank it all the way up. And by 2.8, you're probably out of steam in terms of the halation effect. And at that point, you might want to start thinking about moving to the L1, which will give you a lot more uh, strength at those slower F numbers. So yeah, the L2, K35 inspired, very subtle effect, has a neutral position, great for narratives. So our third look is our L3, which we call retroscope. One of the use cases that we really saw for L3 was to do faux anamorphic. If you crop your footage to 2.35 to 1 with the L3 on there, you're gonna get the astigmatism at the edge of the field and you're gonna give it at least a little more of an anamorphic field than just a standard spherical crop. This particular look will do some really cool things to the edge of the frame and it will also do really interesting things to the bokeh. So right now I'm at F 1.3, I'm at my strength is zero, focused on the face. Now we have this plant here in the scene, and then you'll also see the bokeh as I go from two, four, six, eight, ten. You can see a couple things happening. At this aperture, the face actually is gonna have some halation, but you're also seeing some of that vintage swirly bokeh, and then you're seeing foreground objects go out of focus. And you'll notice that you won't be able to get those foreground objects really back into focus, because it's not a field curvature, it's an astigmatism. So now I'm at 1.8. Again, watch this as you go two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. But you see a bokeh effect. You see the sharpness of the edges of the plant go in and out. But you see her face stayed relatively neutral. That was the goal of L3. Yeah, so the cool thing about L3 is that it's fairly F number independent. And even though it'll be a little more subtle, it will actually never go away. With the right scene, with the right lighting, and you can see right now, I'm at, I'm at my neutral position at 5.6. And as I crank that up, I'm gonna point you to the lower 
right hand corner of that plant in the foreground and you can see it's in and then you can see things start to just fall. I'm still seeing the effect and you can see there's really nothing happening to her face. So it's a pure off axis effect. This is great for landscapes. Any scene that you would want to shoot anamorphic but you don't want the hassle of anamorphic, L3 is a great choice. So the tuner by Module 8 is a really easy, accessible, and affordable way to get the look of some of the most iconic vintage lenses ever made. We've done the testing, we've done the design, but there's gonna be nothing better than seeing what you guys come up with and create on your own using the Module 8 tuners.